I had given up and I had kind of already accepted that my new, the new norm was living with chronic illness. Um, but there was something that gave me, I was like, wow, I actually, I felt motivated to like want to learn, to want to start driving again and, and started thinking about like, wow, like I wonder what the waves are like. You know, and that's sort of, I'm looking at the surf cams and starting to reach out to people more. Um, and that was just like a change where I just don't know what it was. And I, I, I know it was part of like the plant based treatment that we had started and your protocol that it's, it definitely made me, I don't know, there was just a change that it's, it's like I just like I said, it was, I was something was else was happening where I was starting to be like, there is life beyond illness. Welcome to the BioNexus Health Podcast with Dr. Jodie A. Darshaw, who holds a PhD in integrative medicine, a doctorate in OT, specializing in neurology, is board certified in integrative pediatrics, an internationally recognized pioneering clinician, registered herbalist with the American Herbalist Guild, and author. Her naturopathic journey began when her son, who was diagnosed with autism, developed a series of traumatic, life-threatening chronic health issues. For over a decade, she's honed her skills to combine the ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with Western herbal medicine that has helped patients in over 50 countries and recovered her son who is on his own journey towards becoming a physician. And now here's your host of BioNexus Health Podcast, Dr. Jodi A. Dashaw. Hello and welcome to another episode of BioNexus Health a podcast series where we discuss the benefits of uh, natural medicine and uh, using herbal extracts and herbal medicine, all natural, plant-based treatment options for various chronic illnesses. Um, today, we have with us Matthew from Vermont, who will be sharing his journey with mold, biotoxin illness, tick-borne infections, Lyme, and uh, co-infections with us today. So welcome, Matthew. Uh, really happy to have you here. Yeah, thanks, Dr. Shore. I'm happy to be here. So let's, let's you know, um, start with uh, speaking about your journey. And if, yeah. you could, yeah, if you could give us some information about uh, the health challenges that, that you faced. So I first, um, you know, with Lyme disease, I first forgot my tick bites. Um, back in 2013, um, so eight, eight years coming on um, right now. Um, and that, at that time, I wasn't even really aware, even this is on the East Coast, I had been living in between Hawaii and Bali and working for a surf company and traveling the world. Um, and had been on the East Coast in New England where I was born and raised, um, but I had come back for a visit and, and it got some tick bites, but never knew anything about Lyme at the time, you know, didn't really think about it. Even when we were younger, I might have had Lyme all along at some, you know, but pulling ticks off and I pulled a few ticks off, um, returned back to my life in Hawaii and went back to Bali and, and continued my work. And I'd say about two months into returning, I started just getting this, you know, like the flu type, you know, typical kind of Lyme, weakness, fatigue, like, oh, I'm just, I got something, mm -hmm. you know, I got, went in for a test with my PCP, my primary care and uh, Lyme came back negative with the, you know, the um, standard ELISA test mm. or um, at that point. And so they said, no, you're fine. You don't need any, you know, no antibiotics. And, and at, at that time, there wasn't much, okay, if you're bitten, you should, you know, do a course anywhere or anything like that. I mean, 2013, I think we've come a long way since then. Um, but, and even testing the ticks, you know, with UMass and things like that, which is really important, I think, now. Um, so I had just continued with, okay, well, nothing's wrong with me. It's just, I'm having, I, I travel the world, um, super physical, you know, surfing every day and working, you know, 60 plus hours a week and um, traveling and all that, but having a hard time getting out of bed and having chronic migraines and this aching and deep joint pain and, and anxiety, which I've never experienced in my life. Um, so that was kind of going up and down and, and seeing some other doctors, you know, um, you know, infectious disease and things like that. Okay. They had, at that point, they said, okay, well, even if you do did have Lyme, 
I'll give you two, two weeks of doxycycline that will take care of anything if, and we're going into like three, four months after, maybe even further after the first initial, you know, tick bites. Um, so actually they only gave me 10 days. They gave me 10 days of doxy and they're like, you'll be fine if anything after that. So did that and I actually felt worse. And at the, that time I had knew nothing what a Herxheimer reaction was. I didn't know anything about Lyme. It was just, let's just try this and you're gonna, just get, you're gonna be fine if it's an infection, you'll be okay. And that's what I was told. Okay, so uh, Matthew, uh, were any co-infections addressed at that time or Never. just Lyme? Never. Just Lyme. Okay. Okay. Because they were, they were said I did have deer tick bites. I took pictures of the ticks at the time and I showed the doctor and the infectious disease doctor never even brought up or my PCP I've ever even brought up. This is in Hawaii and they're not very familiar. They didn't have much Lyme, mm -hmm. although it's recognized everywhere now. It's at that 2013, eight years ago, there was like Bartonella, Babesia, none of that was even I see. Even addressed. Yeah, yeah. It was even tested for, even though the tests were available, I believe. Um, so, you know, that's interesting because that's probably on Hawaii, but on the mainland, uh, some doctors were beginning to, like uh, with my son and myself mm -hmm. in 2010, no, 2009 actually, was when we were. Uh, tested and treated for Bartonella, Babesia, Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, wow. Rickettsia, yeah. those, those showed up. But mm. you know, un unfortunately, it was only uh, the rare few doctors who knew about, yes. about this. And I think there was only one lab which had like semi-accurate testing. Most of the other testing was just like, uh, just like you mentioned, you know, it, it really doesn't show up CDC positive all the time. Yeah. Right, right. So yeah. go ahead. No, and that was the problem. And that was the problem. So at that point, it's like, okay, well, we are not really sure. And, and, and the infectious disease doctor right away, as many, most, I would say, in the beginning of their journey, um, put in his notes, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, mm -hmm. and then chronic migraines and going to a neurologist. And also at that point, well, maybe you should see a psychiatrist, which was, which is very common, you know, mm -hmm. if, mm -hmm. you know, all of a sudden, you know, has there been any life changes or things that maybe are disruptive in your life and kind of just downplaying my actual physical <laughs> symptoms and everything else and making it more psychological. Um, and I didn't, I didn't go down that path. I was going to be like, no, you know, I was like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm unwell. I'm not feeling good. So and this is right throughout the summer of 2013. Um, and so I continued to work with, with, with as much as I could um, in Hawaii at the time. And, you know, I'd come back from Bali. Um, and this was kind of started getting into the fall. And it was getting to the point where I was starting to get vertigo spells. I was, things were, you know, I was sweating at night. Um, I was just, I was starting to have twitches. I had neck pain. Oh. Um, it was like, all of these symptoms were very, were like, bombarding me it wasn't just oh i'm weak it was just all of a sudden multi system like it was, just, it was just it was attacking me from all angles like tinnitus vertigo aching you know it's like pain in my shins and i just i was like what is going on you know you feel like that i don't you know i can't explain this i'm explaining it to a doctor but mm -hmm. they're not really getting it it doesn't match up with what their the allopathic approach of testing and what their results are showing so, you know, at that point, I just kind of gave up on any test because they told me you're fine. I mean, I think I did 36 vials of blood um, to test everything from living in Bali for so many years and back and forth. Right. Anything that I could have acquired over there, you know, and I did have dengue fever and things like that in the past, but. So know, wait, 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 sorry. So 36 vials of blood, every yep. test on the planet, yep. um, all of these symptoms of yours, and they told you that it's all in your head. Yep, they told me it was all in my head. They assured me that I was okay. <laughs> and those were even in the notes. They assured, and, and I've seen that multiple times over the years, being assured that I'm okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm assured you're okay. And I'm like, look, um, okay. Oh boy, I'm yes, okay. yes. Un unfortunately, yes. I've heard this from, um, from many patients. Yeah. You know, I, I might have mentioned to you when um, uh, Brian was in excruciating pain, left leg paralyzed, yep. seven years, six and a half year old little kid in a wheelchair, 
Right, and this uh, uh, wonderful Ivy League educated uh, infectious disease doctor, uh, you know, evaluates him every which way, scratches his head a bit, and then uh, pulls me into his office, says, Dr. Deshore, you know, if you wouldn't mind coming into my office for a second, I'm like, okay, you know, we'll, we'll probably continue this, the, the discussion over there. And over there, he tells me, have you considered maybe your son is pretending? Mm. Seriously, I mean, this little kid, my only child, he's my yes. world yeah. and he has all my attention. You know, there's no attention seeking behaviors involved here. Yeah. So we just walked out, yep. but you know, never to go back there again, but my goodness. So yeah, I think that's, that's the most important thing is to trust your gut and to not yes. let their, to not let them demoralize or like, just put your, you know, like, you know you're feeling something completely out of the normal and especially someone in my i mean i'm not saying that some people are making it up but my background of not having a psychological or mm -hmm. you know just being a very active person mm -hmm. and yeah i mean i mean we're talking eight years ago so i was 35 at the time i'm 43 now so um yeah, so at that point, it's like, okay, I just ignored everyone. I just went back to work and I just started to like changing things I could do to start doing my own research and like, okay, let's, let's stop gluten and let's, you know, reading a little bit more about Lyme and just trying to bring in some of my own things. Like, oh, let's change your diet because at that point I was very like with Bali, like I'm a street food guy. I'm like eating just whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm working a lot. Just like, let's focus on just what you're like, what you're eating, what you're putting into your body and nutrition. Um, and I, and that just wasn't doing it. And it got to the point where we got into fall, got into November and I just couldn't work anymore. I just like, I can't physically be here. And I had a lot of responsibility. I was running like operations and, um, and flying around to multiple islands and in Hawaii, you know, I was on big Island, you know, in the morning. And then I was in Kauai in the afternoon. And, you know, wow. these things I couldn't even, like, I'm like, I can't even get out of my bed. Um, so I, I took a leave of absence. And luckily just, you know, had some, some savings and things and just sort of need to figure out where do I go from here? And I knew being in Hawaii at that time with doing the research, I wasn't going to be able to get the, you know, the right treatment or the right answer, you know, the answers. And, and that's where I decided, wait, well, look, I can't afford to not work. Um, I have to go to the East coast. So I came back to the spot, you know, back to Vermont to my family um, where, you know, I, you know, I think a lot of people have to do, they have to leave their jobs and, and do that, you know, unfortunately. Um, and even at that point, I, I thought, okay, well now I'm in New England, let's go to, and I, I started going to some, you know, Ivy League, I started going to Dartmouth and, you know, some, you know, even some, you know, Boston and stuff and seeing, you know, doctors that were, I was like, they're going to have the answers. And I spent a year doing every test and MRIs and everything else and, and get the same answers of, you're okay, Lyme's not, you know, um, not in the picture. Um, but over that year, I did get another tick bite. Mm -hmm. And so then I went to the, my back to my doctor that I had here and he said, okay, well, we'll do doxycycline for 30 days. And I actually started feeling better about three weeks into it. And all of a sudden the Herxing, which I didn't know what Herxing was at the time, got so bad where I thought I was, I thought my heart was going to stop. I thought I was just going to like, that was the end. Like it was, I didn't know at that time how to like back off or how to treat a Herxheimer with Epsom salt baths and, and detox and dry brushing, all these things you learn over time. And there was no support and which is, which might've helped me throughout right. the antibiotics as if I had some drainage and some detox, right. but there was nothing at the time. It was just take antibiotics and some probiotic like yogurt you're safe for your stomach and you'll be fine no matter what. And that was kind of like the promise. And I got into like about 24 days, 25 days out of the 30 days. I was like, I can't do this anymore. I feel like I'm literally just going to like stop breathing. <laughs> um, so I stopped it. And then I just kind of just went on to continue with this life, which I thought was going to be my new life of not knowing. Um, and I had never seen any naturopathic or LLMD at that point. And come to find out there was one only five miles from my parents' house over the course of the year I had no idea about. And so I did go um, finally after about a year being back and 
yeah, so we went in and there was like this, even without blood testing, I mean, your symptoms alone are diagnosed Lyme. I mean, there's not even, even without doing blood work, I mean, I had like 18 to 20 symptoms out of their list of their chart of Lyme symptoms of 30 or something. Um, it's like, I would diagnose Lyme right away. Now it's figuring out getting into testing and, and we did the blood work and it did come back. It did show that I was positive um, with Borrelia. And I think, I believe it showed Babesia as well. And we did a full panel and there was these other co-infections or, you know, like the things that we've showed up or like, yeah. And I did have Epstein-Barr in the past, you know, like all these other things that we started to dive in. I, the other infectious disease doctor didn't really start to, you know, look at. Um, so at that point we went right into antibiotics, um, but I believe in different ones. Um, but we went, we went into like long-term antibiotics. Okay. Um, I'm not sure specifically, you know, at the time, what do you know, but, but we're like going in for, I know Sefton at one point I took. Um, right. So there is, uh, you know, there is usually uh, amoxicillin, Sefton, azithromycin, clarithromycin. Then- clarithromycin, yeah, I believe. I, did, I believe we did, we did clarithromycin. So I did a full year of antibiotics and we did six months of either clarithromycin or azithromycin. And then we went to Sefton after that with that. Okay. Um, along with some support um, for drainage, for liver, um, for lymph, mm-hmm. um, and for kidneys, um, being with naturopaths, um, that approach and some drainage and detox and learning about Epsom salt bass, okay. for, okay. um, for about a year, you did uh, antibiotics with a local uh, Vermont. Lyme literate naturopathic practitioner. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. So how? So what next? And and how did you hear about uh, Bionexus Health? So at, you know at that point I had gone. You know I felt with the antibiotics. You know and having some more tools in my kit to like you know detox and all these things that you know to implement. We were able to start treating and I was noticing some difference. I had stopped driving at that point. I was, the anxiety was so bad and things. Mm-hmm. Um, but over the treatment of the year and then going past that, um, I had I had plateaued. I noticed that, yeah, I was getting so much better, but there was a plateau. And I was only at like 35% or like maybe 40%. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's why, you know, just in doing research and reading a lot at this point, I mean, you have nothing but time because you can't leave the house really or too much of anything. Um, and I was speaking to um, someone locally or in New Hampshire who had done one of your retreats, I believe down in North Carolina or something. Okay. Um, and she was like, look, if anyone can help you now, um, there's someone I'd like to introduce you to and her name is Dr. Jordina Shore, Bionexus Health. And she goes, she was kind of helping me like counseling because at that point, I think I feel like you're very alone and you're, you're want to take everyone's what they say. You, you don't know really, you know? So, so I was kind of just like my fr- a friend, you know, I met that was, you know, I battled Lyme and it has, you know, I have remission or, you know, cured it had, um, was kind of helped me because it's very confusing of what to believe or what to take and, and you put so much trust in doctors, you know, and, and having plateaued in, and she was like, I really think you need to meet Dr. Deshore because you are so complex <laughs> and you are very sensitive. And I, I went through that year of those treatments of so many reactions in so many emergency room visits. I mean, I remember times where I would, I would be in the ER three, four times in a month. Um, so that's when I reached out and that was, that was in July, 2017. Um, and so I think it took some time. It would have been earlier, maybe May of when I was trying to getting all gathering all the information, but getting in contact with your office and getting everything done and was able to get down there. Um, which was very difficult. I had not left an area of where I was in Vermont of maybe 30 minutes and three years, maybe. Um, so that challenge of taking the five hour drive um, in itself was, was a very big step for me. Um, but I was so determined 
and so confident in reading and hearing what my friend had to say about your approach. And I was like, I have to get down there. I have to do this no matter what. So um, yeah, so my brother drove me down. We had a morning appointment and we left very early. Um, and I, I, I remember so clearly being there. And at that point I was on such strict diets and everything. I, I don't think I was over maybe 110 pounds. I was very thin, very frail, very weak. Um, yeah, and so that's that was my first you know, counter, I believe it was July 2017. Um, and I think we spent about two hours, my first consultation, um, and a very thorough um, exam and over my you know treatment so far and and everything and my history, my overall history and everything. Um, and then you got into your approach, you know, um, which is which was totally new and in, in, in the plant based. Um, where before it was just like hammering it with antibiotics and all this. And it was, I knew that wasn't going to be, that wasn't, was going to help me um, or make progress. I did a little bit, like I said, but I plateaued and that's when it was time for a change. So I was very open to everything and it was, it was, it was new to me. Um, I wasn't clear on the thing, but you had explained it, you know, what your approach was and that it's different for everyone. Um, and looking at my charts and you ordered a, a very, <laughs> extensive labs um, and I believe in my in our discussion mold came up which had, has never was never addressed and that was one thing that I kind of like it just all of a like this bell like if something just went off like I was like wow you know mm -hmm. I've been living in tropics for years um, returned to my parents house didn't notice didn't think of it with Lyme, um, but there's tremendous amount of mold in my parents' basement. You know, they have oh, just a wet, a lot of New England houses, like, you know, um, are just had that issue with mold. So when you had mentioned that, you're like, okay, well, I want to test you for the gene, you know, for mold for Sears and stuff like that. And, and I had to go to LabCorp and Quest, you know, kind of break it up and do all, all of these testing and come to find out, I believe, you know, that you found, I forget exactly which is the HL, the one the gene for mold yes oh. yes so we well, we found that you were uh, HLADR yes acceptable right you yep. you had the gene for mold yes yes we also did uh, a lot of uh, urine testing stool yep. testing right yes. we did uh, your Marcon's nasal swab testing yep. which is uh, right. oh, yes. yeah so a full like I mean it was it was a, a new like approach as far as like, I felt I had some of that testing before, but not so extensive and not such a broad, mm -hmm. you know, like to, to really like pinpoint like what's going on here and to, to not just dismiss anything and not to, you know, like to rule everything out. I mean, I was open to everything. Um, so that, you know, at that point, you know, you, you came up with your protocol um, for me, which is very specific and detailed, to, you know, towards me. And I was definitely nervous at the time, you know, to start, I think like, which anyone is, is to try any new treatment. Um, Cause you don't know how you're going to react when you have her, when you try something and you have a Herx reaction and you just don't know, you know, what's gonna, oh. how you're gonna affect and, and, and plant-based not, not being familiar with it. But I got familiar with it very quickly and started doing a lot of reading um, with Dr. Booners and, you know, and, and people you've studied with and, Dr. Klinger, there was just a lot of doctors that I started to read about in the research and things like that. Um, so yeah, so I started my treatment, that was July. I, I think by the time with the testing and all that, I got back, this wasn't almost into fall where I really started treatment. Um, and it was, it was slow for me, I'm very sensitive. Mm -hmm. um, I never was in the past before, I don't know if it was a Lyme or the mold, but I could always take any type of medication or whatever and never had a reaction. Whereas now, anything I took, I was going into a Herx or it was causing intense headaches or tremors or um, things like that. So I, I, I started very slowly, even though like some of the things were, you know, oh, it's take, you know, five to 10 drops. I would always start with one drop and slowly work my way up because I knew my body at that point where I was like, I need to start at the lowest dosage and slowly work it up, which with plant-based you're able with the tinctures, you're able to do that. It's very easy to control and not have to stop 
your treatment altogether, but you can, you can just sort of taper down like, okay, this, you know, I'm not feeling as well. I don't need to stop it, but I can set a five drops. I can go to one, you know, or, you know, you can, it allows you to do that. So I went from that whole winter starting, you know, our protocol. And I believe, you know, I was on a lot of the plant-based antimicrobials, um, you know, Bidens Pelosa, Cascala, Otunia, um, Red Sage. Um, there's a few others, you know, that we're in, but then also some, you know, the lymph, the kidney, the hepatic, the, 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 the pathways of detoxing pathways. Um, controlling histamine as well, because my histamine levels were quite high, which I think is something very important that was never addressed. Um, so yeah, so having that, that protocol specific to me really started to see improvement. I think it was in like the spring of 2018 where I felt like I was going from like 45 to like, you know, I was getting up to like that 60 where I wasn't so focused on, at that point, my identity, my identity was you're sick and that's your life. Your identity is you're, you're, no, you're no longer a surfer. You're no longer a skateboarder. You know, you're, you're no longer, the things, your passions and your hobbies and things you love, you lose your identity. And your identity, I, for me, was just illness. Like that was your new life. And that was my new life. Um, and I started to be able to see kind of like life beyond illness at that point which is a strange, it was strange to me because I don't know, it, was, it wasn't like all of a sudden I was, and I was, and I started, I was able to like get some energy and it was starting to drive a little bit more at that time. So the improvements and started, it was doing yoga and meditation. And I was always so busy and I was never one to really do much of that. But I started doing that and I was like, well, I'm able to do this. So it was able, I was able to like separate myself from just okay, all I do is get up, take medications, take tinctures, take supplements, lay back down and wait to take them again in the afternoon and then midnight. You know, I was able to start thinking about, oh, wait, there is, you do have a life besides just illness. And that was very emotional to me because I had forgotten who I was like for three, four years. You know, at that point, I was like, it was very emotional. Um, and to have that stripped away, I was like, oh, that's, you know, some people will, will change their lives entirely, you know, I'd be like, okay. And I believe that you do have to do that. There is lifestyle changes I had to make, but that doesn't change who I was as a person. And I think that's so important in your healing to have, to be able to look forward past illness and have a goal in what you want to do instead of just treatment. So that, you know, just that kind of like, it was like, boom, like, okay, there, there's more, there's more, you know, this treatment is doing something where there is more than just being sick. Um, and so we, we, I mean, we played, we played around with, you know, some things, you know, there's other, you know, you know, blood tests we're doing and yeah. find like Marcons, you know, is positive for, you know, for that. And well, yes, Matthew, you, uh, you did come back positive for a large amount of Marcons uh, yes. sent to a number of antibiotics. Um, I believe after a, a few months, once you were able to build up to a, a reasonable amount of the protocol, yeah. and I'm glad you mentioned you know, that the, the protocol was completely customized to you once mm -hmm. we had the results of all the testing. Yeah. Uh, did you start gaining some weight uh, and some vitality came back. Yeah, I did. You know, it, one thing that you, I think when was very important, you know, I was told, all I was told up until I met you was not what not to do. Don't eat this. Don't do this. Don't do that. Like, and I was just like, and I, I I'm sure you, you probably remember when you saw me and I walked in, I was just like, and when I left, I remember you telling me eat, go to Whole Foods and get some food, you know, <laughs> like there's one down the road and just like, you know, it's, it's not, you know, you need to like change, not don't, don't you let me you know, like the way you explained it was you don't need to be so specific on just like you, this is all you can do. Um, 
I kind of got lost in the question there again. <laughs> but, no, 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 that's fine. No. no. Um, it's because, I mean, I'm watching you get emotional and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm getting emotional as well because I've been here with you the last four years and I've mm. seen you, you know, have your ups and downs. Yeah. Oh, so, yes. So it's, it's important to eat what makes you happy. Yeah. And, you know, honestly, uh, if you have a tremendously limiting diet, then you need to look back at your, um, at your protocol and mm -hmm. see what are the areas that are not being addressed, you know, histamine, yeah. mast cell, multiple yeah, mass, chemical yeah, exactly. sensitivities, yep. you know, so environmental illness. So mm -hmm. things like that have to be addressed. And one thing that, that you, you might have noticed in the protocol, uh, and this was missing from our protocol from um, uh, mine and my sons, which, which, you know, it took me seven and a half years to figure all this out, yeah. is that just killing the infections mm -hmm. and uh, detoxing the mold toxins and additional toxins isn't enough. You, we need to go back and have a protocol that addresses the damage, the physiological damage, yeah. the uh, biochemical changes that are seen in the body. Those have to be uh, repaired. Yeah, the damage. So, yeah, exactly. You know, so once that is undertaken as part of the foundation protocol before ever adding on any kind of antimicrobials, yeah. that's when you know you have a patient who, who can expand their diet. Of course, you have to have a clean diet, yeah. right? Uh, mostly gluten-free, but you cannot limit yourself to the point where you're feeling emaciated. When I saw you, your, your brother had to um, you know, actually support you. Yeah, yeah. To, to help you walk up the stairs, to yeah. help you come sit down, you know, yeah. and that was, uh, it, it was heartbreaking to see that in spite of being treated, mm. in spite of Lyme being uh, recognized, you were still yeah. so fragile. Yeah. So I'm, yeah, so that, that's where we were at. So I'm glad that uh, you you started eating, and then you know, did you notice any positive weight gain? Yes, right. I mean, within months, I had gained. I think I was up to like close to 120 pounds by. Oh, good. That was. I think that was by the holidays. I mean, and I started treatment in the fall around September. I saw you in July in this 2017, and then by like the holidays, it was, and, and like you said, obviously, I mean, I was I was eating organic and you know. You know right. um, healthy diet but implementing things that i was told i couldn't eat and just and what made me happy like things i enjoyed eating you know but there's ways to make things healthier you know like i love refried beans and mexican food it's it's more like okay soaking them for 24 hours and you know things like that you know and and with histamine thing you know i was eating leftovers where histamine you know you, you, they gotta freeze your leftovers you, you know you shouldn't have meat that's like you know let you know things like that see i was learning these things but um, I didn't want to take out everything. Like I, and I treated myself at times, like I would eat some, like a piece of pizza with good gluten, like, you know, and dairy and that, but not eating it every day. You know, it's like, it's sort of a treat. And if something makes you sick, then don't eat it. But if it just makes you like a little bit like, you know, like, oh, it's, it's, you know, causing a little flare up, but you, it's, it, but it lifts your spirit. <laughs> You know, that's just very important just to be like, ah, oh, that, that was amazing. It was worth it. But, but I'm going to go back to my regular, di you know, my diet now, which was, which can still be healthy, but can, doesn't have to be so limited where you can barely have the energy to walk. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, and throughout this, I mean, we've changed, you know, my protocol has, has stayed pretty, you know, specific, you know, obviously to me, but with the mold and the Marcons, um, and the GI issues that I, I suffer a lot with, I, I put a lot back on the, the long-term antibiotics and being on so many antibiotics and, yes. um, and the mold damage, which I've come to see, I started having swallowing issues. I mean, with achalasia, with GI, with motility issues, which I went through every test that you could possibly do, um, esophageal man uh, manometries and you know, barium swallow, modified barium swallow. It's a lot of these allopathic, you know, and, and big hospital, you know, um, tests what they're like, but everything looks okay. But, but the neurological damage that Lyme and the mold itself had done 
through those areas, um, which I notice getting out of and just getting in the sunlight more and being out of the mold and pushing myself to do things that I loved, even though I was on the ocean, getting back in the water on the lake and getting a Santa paddle board, being so weak, but starting just to sit down on it and being on my knees and paddle and how healing that was. The spirit and the treatment, the mind body, like everything coming together yes. um, is what kind of got me to where I am now, which yeah, I'm still battling the illness, but I, I, I'm, focus more now, not so much on just a treatment and, and things dealing with the chronic and living with chronic illness of more of what's, where's next and which next is I want to move on my life back and going back to California, Hawaii and, okay. and moving forward um, in those. And I feel where I'm comfortable, hopefully in the fall where I'll be able to do that. Um, you are, so you're, you're uh, planning on moving to California, back to California yeah. in the fall. Yes, yeah. yes. Yep. Yeah, that's wonderful. Um, I'm glad you, you mentioned that you think, you know, on, on many levels, you are still battling because most patients I see, uh, they have lots of ups and downs. You know, it, it, uh, sometimes you get re-exposed. Sometimes you're not able to get out of the mold environment. Which was my case, is, yeah. Right. It's not easy. You know, there, yeah. there are uh, various reasons involved. Um, everybody has their own little journey yeah. and their, um, you know, uh, own little challenges that they, the big challenges actually that yeah. they have to overcome. So yes, it, it can take many years to repair and regenerate yeah. the body before you can, uh, go back to your new normal. That's another thing that I like you mentioned that it's, it's going to be a, a new normal. Yeah, a new normal. And it's, and it's not that it's not that you're, yeah, you can still be who you were. And, you know, I, I'm, I feel like I'm still the same person. Um, but there's the, the new normal, which is changes in my lifestyle, <clears throat> which even if I didn't get sick would are great <laughs> changes in your lifestyle. Um, anyway, regardless, um, but to be able to, to get to the point where I feel like I'm able, I'm going to be able to move um, and continue this, like I said, because it's not going to be like, I feel like, okay, I'm in remission, I'm completely done, but we have gotten to that point to start last summer or two summers ago before I had more GI issues. I was, I went, I was surfing. Um, skateboarding. I was getting out, socializing. I was back to driving, you know, while I got a new car and I was like, wow, this is it. This is my life is getting back. And then I had some setbacks. So it's, it's, it's not linear. And, and people who think, who under, don't understand it and think it is just a linear, like, oh, you're going to get better. And it's, it, no, it is the roller coaster. It's a roller coaster that they don't, they don't have the, the theme parks because those have an ending and you get off and you go back to your life. You might be terrified for one or two minutes or three minutes, whether the ride is. No, but this is a ride that the roller coaster just, well, okay, in the middle, we're gonna go backwards. <laughs> and it doesn't mean that you're gonna go back to the beginning, but we need to just reevaluate and step back a little bit, slow down, yes. and then we'll build it back up because yeah. like I said, it's just not linear. It doesn't, it, and those who think it's going to be, that's what a lot of frustration people find and, and wanna yeah. give up. Mm -hmm. like don't give up because it's not that's where it's it, it, you people you will get better and i just like i believe i think you just strongly have to continue to believe and look forward and have those things to look forward to um i'm glad yeah. you know uh matthew i'm glad that 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 you you highlighted that because yes we had a time where you were able to uh, go back into physical activity, surfing, driving, you know, being independent uh, and enjoying your life. And then you, what, what we thought you were moving into a, a clean space, yeah. a, a beautiful, um, you know, fully renovated apartment. Yeah. Turned out that uh, there were some mysterious VOCs, yes. which only us moldies, <laughs> Like you yeah. and I are, are, you know, can smell or, yeah. of course, you know, we, we react to. And then 
uh, I also remember that during the move, you know, it was really hectic. And um, I believe you, you ate out for a few days. Yep. And, and you ended up with some gut issues from yeah, that. I got, so yeah. it's, it's up and down. Yeah, it was, you know, that was a huge thing for me. It was like, I was taking these steps, even though I wasn't moving to California or back to right. Hawaii or Bali at that time, I was able to move out of my parents, mm -hmm. my family house after almost five years, you know, four years there, I was getting an apartment to get some independence. Right. Um, and yeah, I did, I did end up having a lot of GI issues. And with that, heck, I was eating out and just kind of wasn't really paying attention too much. And I did end up getting C. diff, you know, at that point. And, mm -hmm. and that, that really threw, <laughs> threw me off. Um, but I'm still, I'm still working on that and, um, but still working on bringing my, the protocol back in slowly and getting it. I got out of that apartment. Um, yes. Good. But it's, I think it's important. The testing, you know, the hurts me, the, the ERMI tests are very important. Um, that's just something, you know, I think that everyone should do in the area. If they're, if they're even think there may be mold, if not, it's worth doing because you don't have to see mold. You don't have to see mold for it to be, it's behind the walls mostly, most of the times, but the right. dust and these army tests will show, you know, um, what's happening. So, yeah. So, you know, like I said, I, we had those roller coaster and these setbacks the last year, but I believe we're getting back to a place where I was a year and a half ago before the move, before that apartment. And yes. Yeah. So. Matthew. It was uh, wonderful to have you here with us today. Thank you so very much for uh, sharing your story. Namaste. Thank you for joining Master Herbalist Dr. Jody A. Dashaw, Director of the BioNexus Health Clinic and BioNexus Herbals, on the BioNexus Health Podcast where we explore and share information and stories about recovering and healing from chronic and environmental illnesses such as mold biotoxin illness, Lyme disease, autism spectrum disorder, fatigue, Crohn's and colitis, mast cell activation syndrome, PANS, and more. Please help us grow our message by subscribing to our podcast channel and sharing the podcast on your social networks. For more information visit bionexushealth.com. And for the first time, out of all the treatments I, I had done, I had started to feel, and I wouldn't say myself, like completely, but I started to have, I don't know, like a vision, or I started to, to feel like, okay, we're, we're making, there's some progress, something is changing here. Um, and I wasn't sure, pinpoint, it was, it was, I mean, there was a lot of things, like energy, like I was, I, there was motivation that I felt like I didn't have like I don't know I had given up and I had a kind of already accepted that my new the new norm was living with chronic illness um but there was something that gave me I was like wow I actually I felt motivated to like want to learn to want to start driving again and and started thinking about like wow like I wonder what the waves are like you know, and that's, sort of, I'm looking at the surf cams and starting to reach out to people more. Um, and that was just like a change where I just don't know what it was. And I, I, I know it was part of like the plant-based treatment that we had started and your protocol that it's, it definitely made me, I don't know, there was just a change that it's, it's like, I just, like I said, it was, I was, something was else was happening where I was starting to be like, there is life beyond illness. Um, and that had to be from what the plans, you know, what I was taking, what my protocol was doing. And it was very emotional for me. I mean, I was, I remember just crying. I mean, it's just thinking about it now is very, it's very difficult because when you've been sick for that many years and when you, you start to think about, oh, wow, there is, a, there is part of you still there. And when that happened, um, that was a huge turning point for me. Um, and just to see that, yeah, there is life beyond this, beyond this illness. And I didn't, I felt like I didn't identify as just being sick at that point. And, um, and there was going to be, oh, there, there was hope for me. And I really thank you for that. And that's where I, I feel like, yeah, that was a real, the, the real turning point. So.
information within this video, audio, or text, collectively known as the podcast, has not been reviewed by the FDA. Nothing within the podcast is intended as or should be construed as medical advice. Information is for general informational and educational purposes only. Consumers of the podcast should consult with their healthcare practitioners for medical recommendations. Seek the advice of a qualified healthcare provider. Do not disregard the advice of a healthcare provider based on any information from the podcast. The information within the podcast may contain information concerning dietary supplements or over-the-counter products that are not drugs. Our dietary supplement products are not intended for use as a means to cure, treat, prevent, diagnose, or mitigate any disease or other medical or abnormal condition.